there, it's Jenny, and I am back today to share how I planned as I went with these stickers from a shop that I got. I'll link them up. I don't remember the name right offhand, but it's a back to school week because it, my sons are going back to school in person for the first time since March of 2020. My district has been virtual the entire time. And so this was a big week and it felt like called for back to school. You saw the lower left and I didn't love on both of these clusters, the background sticker, but for the edges peeking out, they were great. So I layered those down first and then put ones that I did like on top. Now for Wednesday, the same is sort of true. I used one of the half boxes that I would typically write plans in that I wouldn't use to write plans in. The background is really dark, so it's not one of those types of stickers that I would personally use. And then they work out great for layering. So again, don't be afraid to think outside the box, no pun intended. Actually, I totally meant the pun. Um, and use stickers that you wouldn't normally use. Like look at them a different way. Okay, well, is there an edge on here that I like? Or, you know, don't think of it in terms of, oh, well, these are completely unusable. Or if you're a frugal type person, like I typically t think that I am, don't think of it in terms of, oh, well, I mean, you know, layering, isn't that kind of wasting stickers? No, not at all. It's really making the page more beautiful and you're still using the stickers. So I would rather use them up and not have them go to waste. And so that's where the layering comes in great. Now, with that said, sometimes I'm sure it doesn't come in great. I'm sure there are times that the stickers are not cute at all and I wouldn't be able to use them. Or let me go back. It's not that they're not cute at all. It's that they're not my taste. But... Anyway, I am starting this week with using writing directly on the paper with my mild liner and my Zig Clean Color Dot marker. It has changed, those markers have changed my planning, I mean, just so much. I love bullet point stickers, but you know, they're, they're not exactly convenient and they're a little bit cumbersome sometimes because they're so small. And so these markers are everything. I love them. Now you can see I'm using some different sticky notes this week and I am really excited to have found this brand. The brand is called Stickies and I will link them up in the comments below, but they are a black woman owned shop. She's got a lot of really cute designs. The paper is nice. They're very nice sticky notes. And I was really excited to have her send me some of these to try out because I love the idea of promoting other female and black owned shops. And so this was a win-win for me. Anyway, you can see that I again am alternating and then using the little sheet of decorative stickers as I guess sort of decorative icons because like in that blue box I didn't really need a composition book sticker but it was really cute and then it highlighted the school for my son if that makes sense. So obviously I could have used a clock or a pencil or something like that to notate school and the composition book did the job. I am going through and planning out the week with the activities that I already know and you can see that I do use the sticky notes as I referred to them to pre-plan. So the reason I started using a planner was to make sure that I could get to all these things on time and not forget about them because I am fairly forgetful. And so the sticky notes help me get these things in my planner so I actually get to them or get my children to them. So that is really why I plan. And then the decorative element to it makes it just like seals the deal like it makes it perfect. Now I am using those colored baseball icons a lot this week. I forget about them sometimes and then sometimes the colors are a little bit too bold if I'm using a pastel color palette or maybe a more neutral color palette. So I was excited to be able to use them since this week is all completely primary colors thanks to the back to school. So I'm still continuing to alternate, but as I've talked about before, I like to try to be mindful of how much is going on and then where I will leave that open space. Now, I like to be mindful of where I'm gonna leave the open space because, okay, say I'm gonna need to decorate more at the end of say the end of Monday for example I want to be able to work with that space that I have available so 
and that the, it'll look good. Okay, so like if I'm gonna add more decorative elements that it'll look good and in the space that I've left open. So you're thinking, oh my gosh, that might be a ton of work. It's really not. Once you get used to planning in this way, like keeping the pages really full at the end of the week, that it becomes very, very easy. See, look at that super cute little sunflower at the bottom. I just love it. I'm super into sunflowers this year. I tried to grow some in my garden and my seedlings all died, so I need to go buy some from the store. But anyway, I was super excited to see that she had sunflower designs in her shop because I thought that was just a really fun way to highlight something that I've been into already. So it's very exciting. Anyway, I am using this sort of a golden yellow this week, and I'm actually not only using the yellow, I'm using the red, I'm using the bright green, and I'm using the turquoise highlighters as well to complement the stickers. And so I'm trying to vary it, keep it, you know, shake it up a little bit, not be like, oh, red, red, blue, green, green. You know, I'm trying to really vary how I'm using the highlighter so at the end of the week it'll be fairly even like oh I use the yellow twice I use the green three times you know so it's fairly close but you never know sometimes I switch gears midweek and think of different things as we go now so like these sticky notes right here I don't mean to talk about the sticky notes a ton but what's really cool about them is it left room at the top for a title and then had little bullet points on it also so not to highlight the, the sticky notes too much. It's not a big thing. They're just very cool and there's a bunch of really neat designs, that's all. All right, so I matched the backpack and the highlighter over here on Thursday. I thought that might be fun since it was a little turquoise colored backpack. And then I was able to write the school schedule. The school schedule, honestly, I think until the end of the year is going to end up being a large bulk of my planning because it's very complicated and not impossible to figure out, that's not what I mean, but it's very complicated. Like, okay, you know, you're online on at this time and then this time, and then you go to school, but then you're online for this time, and then the next day is totally 100% different, and it's, it's just a lot. It's, like I said, it's very complicated. So I'll be keeping track of that until June when my kids go back to school. And obviously my high schooler, he drives himself, so I don't have to worry about getting him, but I like to be mindful of when he's in school, obviously. So now I am just continuing on. We've, we're on Friday, and you can see right there where I used the red highlighter. I do try to keep the alternating in the columns. So I wrote on the sticker, then I write directly on the page. But if I'm able to, like I was here with the red highlighter, I like to try to incorporate it side by side as well. And I was able to right there and most of the time it works out okay. There are occasions though that it gets a little stickier and I have to I have to forgo it in the horizontal like from day to day versus in this in the column. Now the end of the weekend ends up being a little bit empty at this point because I did not know the schedule of my son's baseball games when we started the week so I just have to leave it all blank but it's okay because luckily with this system of planning the plan as I go I am able to just go back and add in whatever I would like as it happens now I'm putting down the half box because I actually remember how I talked so much about how complicated my kids school schedule was while I screwed it up I missed an entire block of school time, so I needed to add that in. So I was very grateful for having some extra room to be able to do that. Now, again, remember I talked about alternating the highlighters. That's difficult too after the fact, right? So I started and I alternated it. It was super nice and it was totally like, oh my gosh, each highlight got it used twice, you know, or whatever. But then now going back and trying to alternate it with what you already have is a little bit trickier but it's obviously something we're able to do. Now, a lot of the filling in this week I'm gonna do for my quarter stick, quarter box stickers and half boxes are with these Chrissy Ann Design stickers. I don't know if you're familiar with Chrissy Ann Designs. She's been around about a thousand years and she has some stickers in Michaels and she is just really fabulous. And these are genuinely some of my very favorite stickers. The quality is insane, like they're so nice, like really awesome vinyl stickers and great saturated colors and stuff. And so I love to use them, but I find myself hoarding them. I'm not really sure why, to be honest, because I'm not a hoarder by nature, but for some reason, these stickers really do it to me. And 
but it's okay because I love flipping through the binder and seeing all the bright colored stickers. So most of the Chrissy Ann stickers I have are half or quarter boxes, and that's on purpose because I love writing on them, which you do have to use a permanent marker. So this is a fine tipped pilot marker that I'm using, but like a ultra fine Sharpie or something like that would do the job too. I just love the way that the paper feels with this pen. And so that's really part of what makes this such a favorite for me. They're so smooth and rich saturated colors. They're beautiful. So now we can go on to Tuesday and I am still trying to document some of the same things including the happy mail that I get and then also I am documenting wins and losses, things like that. I mean, I'm not doing perfect or anything on that, but I'm trying and that's really what matters, I think. And even if I feel, I feel like if I even I hit a lot of it, I'll still be doing really well. Now I'm back to using a Papermate Flare as my primary pen. I was using the Zebra Sarasa for a while. I do use that in my daily planner still, and I still really like it a lot. I just was missing the flare a lot, so I felt like this was kind of a good compromise to use them back and forth, you know, use the Sarasa on one planner, use the Paper Made on another, because I love how both of them write, and I get really good results with both of them. So it worked out okay. So now this is the lettering technique you've seen me do in the past, and I even hesitate to call it a technique because it's really just so incredibly simple. I'm not sure that it's even a technique, but just writing the word in big block letters and then drawing one extra downstroke just to be able to color that in, it really sort of mimics using like alphabet stickers or something like that and is bright and draws attention to it, which I like that a lot. Now you can see right there, I often clean off the tip of my highlighters with just a piece of scratch paper, or in that case, like the side of a sticker sheet. <laughs> it makes me laugh because I really just don't care. It's no big deal to me, but I do want those highlighter marker tips to be clean. So I need to get that black ink off of there. Now you can see right there, I wrote on that sticker that has stripes on it. I I'm really hesitant with stickers with patterns on them for some reason, at least if the stick if the pattern is fairly dark. So for example, there's a couple that I just won't use. We talked about that already, the one that I layered with the back to school, but they're just too dark. I just am not interested in using that. And so they either get used for layering, like you saw, or I just don't use them. Basically, they probably get thrown away. I don't think I even save most of them in my leftover sticker book. Now you can see here, quarter boxes are really great. They serve a great purpose in terms of, I get to write down the thing that I wanted to write down. It provides a pop of color, but it doesn't take up the same amount of room as a half box. So while I'm not drawn to them as often as I am a half box, I definitely try to remember to use quarter boxes because they're beautiful and they do the job that I need them to do without having to use all of the space of a half box. The one thing that I'm loving about this memory planner or photo less memory planner is that I really am able to document some of the little things that I maybe wouldn't have documented otherwise in my regular like nitty gritty day to day planner. And I certainly would not have documented in my real memory planner with photos. Like for example, programming the garage door openers. It I got a new car, so I needed to reprogram the garage door opener in the car. And they're just little details of life that I think are so interesting and I think will be interesting to look back upon. But certain types of planners don't lend themselves for me to some of those details because like my day-to-day -day workhorse planner, that's not, I, there's too many other like things that I write down there. So remembering, you know, programming my garage door opener wouldn't get done. And in my memory planner, that's just really not the type of place for that. So 
it wouldn't get done there either. So it's very interesting to me and it's one of the things that I really love about this planner. And if you're fairly new here and you haven't heard me talk about this planner specifically, it is my photoless memory, memory planner in that I love to jump around planners. I love to hop from this page to that page to this book to that book. And I the thing that bums me out about that is that I, at the end of the year, don't have one planner that can sit on my shelf and I can look at all the appointments and lists and things like that. So that's where this comes in. This comes in that I do this every week, I fill it out, it's got all the information, and at the end of the year it can sit on the on the shelf, but yet I don't have to have any guilt from bopping back and forth to different planners that I use each week and that I cross things out and stuff like that. So I love it, and like I said already, I'm able to include little details that I would not have included in my regular planner that I'm just writing all the things in. Wow, Thursday is finished. That's crazy how that happens. I only had one extra little decorative spot after I did all of the planning, which is just, it's amazing to me how the end of the week always ends up so busy. So now I am documenting my husband playing pickleball, which is really funny because I use the tennis racket and the ball to notate pickleball, which is definitely not the same, but you know, it's the best that I've got for stickers for my planner. So there you go. Now I am working from the bottom up. And again, as we've talked about already, I knew that I did not have very much on Friday and I wanted to be mindful of where I would put decoration. So where would I want this decoration? I knew that I didn't want it all the way to the top because I wanted to add some washi. So that's why I started with all of the text at the bottom since I already had the basketball activity and baseball activity down there. Now this washi is so pretty. It's got really great texture. The foil is gorgeous. It's got a black background. It's also from Chrissy Ann Designs. I ordered a few different rolls from her. I mean, it's been a long time now. And this one has stars. I have another one that has hearts and I have a plaid one also. And I only use them sparingly, but I just think they're so pretty and I love them this week in my planner. I always feel like I've hit the mark when I get finished with planning on Fridays. And I think that has probably something to do with, you know, sort of that downhill slide, just because now you only have Saturday and Sunday left, which is fun days, right? Okay, so I'm adding this yellow grid washi, and I think I've talked to you about it before. I love it. It's super wide and super thick. It's just the perfect yellow, and the grid goes with everything. So it's just one of my favorite washies to use right now, especially because it doesn't even necessarily have to look like washi, if that makes sense. You could have used pattern paper or a big sticker because of it, it being so very neutral. And being able to use it in conjunction with that star washi is perfect because it's so neutral, but it still matches. All right, so we are adding Saturday's activities and I'm doing that and being careful to do that right next to the decorative element that I added on Friday so that if I need to add more decorations, it can go above or below wherever I so choose to put that. Now see, that's a perfect example that I talk about where I like to document the wins and losses as well. I could put the score too, that would be awesome if I did that, but you know, baby steps, am I right? I'm just barely remembering to add that we had lost. So the score is probably asking a little right now, but I will hopefully get to that in the future. I have a few of these Chrissy Ann Design samplers and what's cool about them is there's a wide variety of stickers on the sheet. So I often hesitate to buy things like that because I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. But in the end, it ends up cool because maybe I ended up with stickers that I wouldn't have bought myself again, because I just said that, but work perfectly in lots of different applications of planning because I never know what I'm going to end up with, especially all these years later. You know, I mean, I feel like I've just ended up with this collection of things and I'm always not 100% sure how they're going to go together. So being able to have like, so that tiny little strip sticker right there that I could just write a couple words on, I would not have purchased that myself. I would have thought it was way too small, but it was perfect for this particular layout. 
Now you can see I've still got the tiniest bit of white space, so I'm going to try to add some of these decorative clusters or, you know, this these decorative stickers. I'm going to cut the bookshelf. I just want one of the shelves, and I don't know, maybe that's not the greatest of ideas because I do typically prefer thing in threes, but I'm going to add it right down there at the bottom and then just put the little book sticker on top. Now I do still have some more white space up at the very top, so I'm going to create sort of a faux bookshelf. The books with the apple next to it and then the glasses and I think they just all went together probably because of the varying heights in the stickers but I think they look really cute together. So now we've just got one last day to do so I need to add the things that I need to add so the baseball games and the errands that I need to run and again that polka dot sticker it was it was on the edge like oh is it too dark is it too light or too dark for sure not too light and I added the rest of that sticker that I cut up at the top because I knew that I wouldn't fill all of Sunday so I definitely wanted to use it because I thought it was really cute and now it was much much smaller so that probably worked out great because then I didn't have didn't use too much room on decor and left plenty of room for the things that I needed to get done. Now I did want to create sort of a green cluster. I don't really know why it just felt sort of cool or whatever, especially because I had a blue one on the other side of the page. So I carried the green from the box to the Sunday section with the mild liner. So I'm just filling out the rest of Sunday and then that will be it for me. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the box below and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Thank you so much and make it a great day.